What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 17.6.1 to the general public just a week after the release of iOS 17.6. Now along with this update, we also got iPadOS 17.6.1, macOS 14.6.1, and then for older devices, we got iOS and iPadOS 16.7.10, a very rare update, along with macOS 13.6.9. But of course in this video, video we're talking all about iOS 17.6.1. Now you can see the size of this update came in at a very small 345 megabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro so a small update size as expected for a double point update. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for this new version settings general about 17.6.1 and the new build is 21G93. And then if we go back and check out the modem firmware that is 1.70 point zero two so that's the same as 17.6 all right so now what's new here in ios 17.6.1 and as expected anytime we get a double point update so a 0 0.6 0 0.1 that's two points in there anytime we have two points that means it's going to be strictly a bug fix and security patch update you're not going to see any new features with these updates and that's also why they have such a small update size and it's also why they come typically you know a week or so after the release of a major version like 17.6 last week so if you take a look at the release notes it tells us the main thing that has been fixed here and it says that this update fixes an issue that prevents enabling or disabling advanced data protection. Now, this was reported a few times to me personally, and also dozens of times I've seen it on Apple support forums and on Reddit. And I can show you what was going on. So if you go into your settings and go to your iCloud and then go down to the iCloud section and then go all the way down to the bottom here and look for advanced data protection. If you go into there, you get the option to turn on advanced data protection. So if you go to turn it on you'll notice that when you go to set up an account recovery it will say if you go to add a recovery contact it says that you cannot add recovery contact on this iPhone and it says that this is a new device even though this is definitely not a new device it's multiple years old it's been on my account for multiple years so that was the big issue also when going to set up a recovery key that was not working for a lot of users as well so you can see that some of these people on reddit they're saying that when they're trying to disable it they get an error saying there was a problem turning off advanced data protection please try again later and they've been getting that error every time that they try to turn it off for the past few days so it's not just an issue with turning it on it's also an issue with turning advanced data protection off which is even a bigger issue for a lot of people because again this means that some users are not going to be able to access things like their iCloud photos you know anything that is backed up to iCloud that you see right here they will not be able to access that and some people were not able to access this information for weeks since they could not disable advanced data protection so thankfully this update does fix both of those issues both turning it on and turning it off and also the issue with the account recovery key where you cannot turn that on and enable that so all of that has been fixed with 17.6.1 so you should not have any issues with advanced data protection any longer and just to show you it's working here we're going to go into our iCloud section and go down to advanced data protection and we're going to turn this on and we're going to set up account recovery and you can see that when we go to add a recovery key it's going to let me now whereas it did not let me before so it's going to scan my face ID and you can see that we can you know start our security delay so that's just a different feature that of course is going to be the story and device protection feature but we were able to turn on recovery key without having an error and it's the same for adding a recovery contact so before in 17.6 it just said that I was not able to add a recovery contact but here in iOS 17.6.1 you can see that it will let me go through with that it just has to get past the stolen device protection prompt I don't even get prompt for that even though that's enabled here on the 17.6.1 device so clearly this update is very important for a lot of people out there who are having issues with stolen device protection now aside from that there's nothing else really mentioned in the release notes or even on the security updates page so if you check apple's security patches page here you can see that there is nothing included with this update there are no cves included so nothing to be patched on ios 
iPad OS, Mac OS. So that's likely because iOS 17.6 just got released last week with tons of security patches. So Apple did not push out this update for security reasons. It was more to fix that bug that we just talked about. Now, of course, there are several other bugs on iOS 17.6 that might be fixed with iOS 17.6.1. I've not been having a ton of issues, but I know you guys have been. And if I go back and look at my comments on my iOS 17.6 video from last week, it seems like there were quite a few other issues that multiple people had. So the first one was related to Siri, and it seems like Siri was having issues sending WhatsApp messages and and it would just say that the contact did not have WhatsApp enabled, even though they did. And there was also an issue with asking for the current weather locations. There was also a bug with the volume slider in iOS 17.6. So if you had the volume turned all the way up and you did a quick gesture down to go down to zero, sometimes it would pop up and just go right back to 100% or go up higher than down to zero. So if that was an issue for you, that could be fixed with this update. It works fine for me. And of course, a classic issue that I see all the time is related to the keyboard more specifically keyboard lag so a lot of times people are having issues with the keyboard where it does not you know keep up with how fast you're typing and that seems to always be an issue when you have a keyboard application installed so if you tap on the plus here and if you notice that you have any you know third-party application installed as your keyboard you know to maybe enhance your keyboard experience I would recommend just removing those because a lot of times that's what causes the issue with you know a laggy keyboard and then some of you also reported that there are random volume spikes when you're typing so that's something I've had before specifically in iOS 15 and 16 but I've not had that with iOS 17 so if you had that issue go ahead and download this update and let me know in a comment down below if it has been fixed but again Apple did not say anything specifically about any of those other bugs being fixed with this update and they also did not release any type of release notes for this double point update Apple typically only releases release notes notes for the main versions like 17.6 for example as far as the performance and battery life goes I would not expect any type of improvement or any type of decrease in either you know the performance or the battery life I would not expect any change here from a double point update it's very rare that those are impacted unless Apple mentions it specifically in their release notes so I did go ahead and run a Geekbench test and we scored a 2903 on the single core and a 71 79 on the multi-core now that was slightly lower than what we scored on ios 17.6 it could have been because it was fresh after the install of the updates but it was still a relatively close score compared to the previous build of 17.6 so that does not always tell the full story this is just a benchmark so i would not really expect any type of difference in performance on a day-to-day -day basis and again the same goes for the battery life i would not expect any type of major change to the battery life with 17.6.1 if you had issues with battery drain then those could be fixed with this update in theory but it's pretty unlikely i would not expect that to change until maybe a 17.7 if we do end up getting that. So now should you update to iOS 17.6.1 or should you just hold off? And I would say that if you had the issue with advanced data protection, I probably don't need to tell you this, but yes, you should absolutely go ahead and update as soon as possible. That is a very major bug if you were in that category of having that issue. So if you're on 17.6 and you had the issue, definitely go ahead and update. Now, if you did not have that issue, then I don't think that you need to run out and update, you know, immediately. There were no security patches with this update, so it's not like your device is going to become more secure after updating as long as you already installed 17.6. So if you're on 17.6, then you don't really need to update to 17.6.1. Now, if you're on an older version of iOS 17 prior to 17.6, then I would probably go ahead and update because 17.6 did patch up a lot of issues. Now, as far as what to expect, next from Apple next up could either be iOS 17.6.2 or we could see the release of iOS 17.7 now I would not expect a 17.7 in the month of August that will likely come in either September or October now we're not going to see any type of major changes to iOS 17 anymore a lot of those you know anything that's going to be changed is going to be added into iOS 18 which is coming in mid to late September the only time we could get a potential 
substantial change is with a 17.7 update, but it will be something relatively minor. So that is just a quick update on iOS 17.6.1. If you enjoyed this video, as always, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future iOS update videos. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.